Alright guys, how's it going? Around about 5 months ago, I created this video, Direct X 12 Analysis and Benchmarks, AMD knocks Nvidia out in the first round, with a question mark, because we simply did not know. We did however suspect that AMD had a large lead in DX12. The video went over the potential benefits of DX12 compared to DX11, and I talked a little bit about Ashes of the Singularity, which looked like it was going to be the very first DX12 game. We also had a look at one or two benchmarks which showed rather surprising performance where much older AMD cards were almost matching Nvidia's high-end 980 Ti. At the end of the video, this slide showed that AMD would be partnering with far more DX12 titles, but some of that was speculation. Five months later, we'll see how it's all working out. Now, a few days ago, Oxide and Stardock Games released an update to Ashes of the Singularity, and the game is due for final release at the end of March. Oxide Games sent over a copy of their benchmark guide and a game code so I could take a look at how things were progressing. Now, the benchmark guide itself is actually very interesting, and it points out all of the new stuff that DX12 will bring. The game is going to have explicit multi-GPU functionality, which is actually really interesting because now you'll be able to use AMD cards and Nvidia cards in the same system both together in one PC, and down at the bottom there is advanced use of D3D12 multi-Q and signalling mechanisms. This is often referred to as asynchronous compute. Now this is quite an interesting one, and it's been talked about a lot over the past few months, so let's just take a quick look at what exactly asynchronous compute is. This slide here shows an example of how graphics cards behave under DirectX 11. You can see here the three different areas of physics, lighting and memory. Physics in red, lighting in shadows, purple and green, and the memory operations in blue. Now all of these use different resources on the graphics card, however they are all stuck in the same queue, and forced to run in a serial fashion. So you can see over at the left, the lighting creating of shadows, followed by the memory upload, followed by compute work in physics, and this is basically how DirectX 11 runs. As graphics cards get more and more advanced, this serial pipeline is becoming a bottleneck. And here we can see under DirectX 12 that these effects can be done asynchronously, in parallel, and that this saves on render time and also decreases latency. It's very useful for VR this as well, because latency goes down and the frame rate goes up. It's really just a win-win. In simple terms, DX12 is more like multi-threading for the GPU, whereas DX11 is kind of stuck in a single thread. Here's another slide showing the graphics queue, the compute queue, and the copy queue. Really, it's all about extracting the maximum potential out of graphics cards, and it's pretty noticeable in some AMD graphics cards, especially the latest ones like the Fury cards. And now we're sort of starting to understand why Fury, Fury X, kind of underwhelmed on release. So let's take a look at some benchmarks. Over at Nordic Hardware, we can see that the Fury X defeats the 980 Ti by 18%. This is quite a lot, yeah, because normally, at 1080p especially, in DirectX 11 games, you would expect the 980 Ti to beat Fury X by 18%. Now, I should say that this is not an overclocked 980 Ti, so obviously when both cards are overclocked, the 980 Ti should close that gap. However, it will still be slightly behind. What is actually quite interesting for me here, though, is that the R9 380X is almost tying with the GTX 970. Now, this is something that I predicted may happen in certain DX12 games. I do, however, believe that Ashes of the Singularity is probably going to be one of the best case scenarios for AMD, certainly early on in the DX12 era. Now, the game has various quality settings, with crazy quality being the highest setting, and when you turn it up to crazy, the results start to look pretty crazy. Here we can see the R9 Fury, that's the normal Fury, not the Fury X, and the 390X easily surpassing the 980 Ti. This is at QHD resolution, on the highest in-game settings. Interestingly enough though, the 380X's performance tanks here, and it is even below the R7 370, which obviously should not be happening. This behaviour was also noticed on some other websites, and it was also noticed by myself. Most of the other websites reckoned it was a VRAM limit, however this simply cannot be the case, because the R9 380X has 4GB of VRAM, whereas the R7 370 only has 2GB of VRAM. I tested it on my own R9 285, which is pretty much like the R9 380 here, 
and I could not get it to run well on anything except the lowest settings. This slide here, however, proves that it is not a VRAM limit. There must be some kind of driver issue. Hopefully that will be fixed soon. Now we talked about asynchronous compute and the game allows you to turn it on or off. And here we can see some pretty interesting results. Clearly you can see that Fury X gains quite a bit from having asynchronous compute on, as does the R9 390 and the other older Radeon cards. When it comes to the G-Forces, however, there are effectively no real gains there. It's more like very very small losses, and we can see this more clearly over at Anantec, where the Fury X gains 6% at 1440p and a massive 20% gain at 4K resolution. That's the difference between having asynchronous compute on and off. And as Anantec mentioned, normally at 4K you would expect a graphics card to be fully loaded anyway. That is clearly not true in the case of the Fury X. There is still performance on the table. 20% higher performance left on the table at 4K resolution simply by turning on asynchronous compute. It really does make you wonder just how badly bottlenecked that card is under DX11. Again, we can see the GeForce GTX 980 Ti loses a little bit of performance. So what is that all about? For me, it's rather simple. Nvidia's cards are really, really good at DX11 and not quite so good at DX12 because Nvidia has a really good DX11 driver. It can do multi-threading already very well whereas the AMD cards just get totally bottlenecked. After the results came in, Nvidia went into full damage limitation mode, and we saw this rather bizarre tweet making the claim that async compute is not enabled on the driver side. Basically, Nvidia saying, we still don't have our async compute driver ready. They said the same thing five months ago, and that it was coming soon. So okay, fair enough. It's well known that Oxide works pretty closely with AMD. They've been doing so since the days of Mantle, mostly because Oxide realised that Mantle would enable Ashes of the Singularity to reach its true potential. So is there a possibility here that AMD and Oxide are collaborating in order to hobble NVIDIA graphics cards. Well, this is the reason why I requested the benchmarking guide. Down at the bottom, in the appendix C, frequently asked questions, we can see the question asked, I've heard that you allow source access to vendors. Is this true? And the response is, yes. Oxide and Stardock want our game to run as fast as possible and with as few issues as possible on everyone's hardware. Thus, we have an open door policy. Basically speaking, they are sharing source code with the IHVs, the independent hardware vendors, in other words, NVIDIA and AMD, are getting direct access to the source code for Ashes of the Singularity. Now I should point out that it is not complete unrestricted access, which is fair enough, but they have created a special branch where not only can vendors see our source code, but they can even submit proposed changes. So if there was something in the game that Nvidia didn't like, they would propose a change. However, Oxide stressed that such changes are relatively rare and typically consist of bug fixes. So both AMD and Nvidia can effectively change the code in the game to suit themselves. Okay, fair enough, but what about at a fundamental level, does Oxide optimise specifically for any hardware? And the answer simply is no, not for any specific hardware. Simply put, they find it too time consuming. And down at the bottom, does Oxide or Stardock have some sort of business deal with any IHV with regards to async compute? Is Oxide promoting this feature because of some kind of marketing deal? And the answer is no. We have no marketing or business agreement to pursue or implement this feature. They are simply doing it because it is a new capability in D3D12, that is DirectX 12, and Windows 10. We implemented it entirely on our own accord and curiosity. Now this doesn't mean that they don't have a marketing agreement with AMD. They probably do. They just don't have a marketing agreement for async compute. And we can see here that in the previous benchmark, they only had very basic support for async compute. However, now we can see that with this evolved async compute usage, the AMD cards are really making big gains. This is not about Oxide and AMD collaborating to hobble Nvidia. This is much more about AMD hardware being brought to life using a bunch of DirectX 12 features that their cards are more suited for. Nvidia has had this access for a very long time and they still cannot fix it. And for me, it's because this is something that cannot be fixed with a driver. Right, so that's Ashes of the Singularity, the first true built from the ground up DX12 title and what was supposed to be the first DX12 title period. However, it has had that title stolen from it in rather dubious fashion. 
And this was yesterday when Gears of War Ultimate Edition launched on DX12. And since that point, the internet has been ablaze because it is an absolute disaster, especially on AMD hardware. Now, what happened? Well, basically, this is the original Gears of War, the exact same code base with DX12 features bolted on. Now, Gears of War was what, 2006? There we go, 2006 source code is being used in this game, and it's had DX12 features bolted onto it, including, supposedly, asynchronous compute. Now, as you can see from the image, not only is it stuttering very badly on high-end AMD cards, it also exhibits this very strange blocky behaviour in the game's default settings, which can only be removed by disabling ambient occlusion. When I hear the words ambient occlusion these days, I immediately think about NVIDIA's HBAO or their horizon-based ambient occlusion, which is used as part of their shadow works and game works. However, if you remember in my last video, I talked about how Nvidia did not have GameWorks DX12 ready. I just couldn't really get over the feeling of dread, however, so I went and checked out GeForce.com, and lo and behold, we see there is a new Far Cry Primal and Gears of War Ultimate Edition Game Ready driver released. Now, let's scroll down to Gears of War, and we can see here, it is an enhanced version of the package launched on Xbox One last year. Furthermore, the PC Edition's graphical fidelity is improved through the introduction of NVIDIA HBAO Plus Ambient Occlusion Shadowing. Now, I had no idea. Obviously, I had a pretty strong assumption that NVIDIA would be working on DX12 Gameworks. However, I really had no idea that they were this far ahead with it. But here is the evidence of it. You've got a game from 2006, which has been remastered into a DirectX 12 exclusive title, including NVIDIA's HBAO+. And NVIDIA also seems pretty happy to point out that it is the first Windows 10 DirectX 12 exclusive title. Now, the game's a complete train wreck. It doesn't even run that well on NVIDIA cards. It's very, very tempting to blame NVIDIA for this. Certainly, the ambient occlusion is causing the blockiness issues on AMD cards because when you turn it off, the blockiness goes away. However, even without that, the game is a complete train wreck. So this one is going on the developer and on Microsoft themselves. I cannot believe that this game is being launched as the very first DX12 game and it is an absolute train wreck. Who made that decision and who is benefiting from this? One thing I am going to berate NVIDIA for is that they are spending more time on Gameworks for DX12 all the while these past five, six months. They have been promising an asynchronous driver, which to me simply is not coming. It gives a very clear indication of what NVIDIA's priorities will be on DirectX 12 going forward. And to be frank, it makes perfect sense. Look at the gap here. Let's say that NVIDIA did get a working async driver. How much can they realistically do with a driver? Can they make up 22% with a driver? I really doubt it. You're talking about a hardware limitation in the Maxwell generation of cards. They don't have the multi-threaded engine that AMD's GCN cards have. Let's be generous and say they got a working asynchronous compute driver, which was half as good as AMD's hardware. So instead of 20% gains, you see 10% gains. They would still be a very long way behind. This is an issue, yeah? Because it suits NVIDIA to ignore asynchronous compute and double down on Gameworks instead. This is the point I tried to make in the last video. They don't have the hardware, but they need to find something and Gameworks is it. But to be frank, I've had it with this. I've said enough about Gameworks, I think, and it's clear that NVIDIA has no intentions of giving it up. If you're an NVIDIA user, this is free performance that could be on the table, but NVIDIA has no incentive to make it better for you because there is no way they can match GCN here. They may not even have working asynchronous compute in Pascal. There's no guarantee they're going to add that to Pascal. This is something AMD did four or five years ago. It was a break away from classical architecture. There's no guarantee that Nvidia is going to copy that. What does look like will happen, however, is that the gaming market is going to split. Even worse than what it is now, because AMD has started to double down on the software development houses that they can count on. Rather than trying to stop Gameworks from hobbling their own cards, they are now doubling down on what they do best with the developers that they get on best with. And this is simply going to end up with Radeon cards winning massively in some games because of Async and GeForce cards winning massively in some games because of Gameworks. This is what DX12 is going to end up as. And that's just to start off it. Next year, 2017, it's going to get even worse. But that's one for another video.
I think it's pretty clear where I stand on this, yeah? You've got Tale of Two games here. Ashes of the Singularity, built from the ground up for DX12, utilising all the new features of DX12, allowing the IHVs to change the source code and giving a fair and open playing field. Then you've got Gears of War Ultimate Edition, 10 year old game with Gameworks bolted on top. One of these games deserves to be the first DX12 title. I can only hope that the former outsells the latter by a very large margin. Really what this comes down to though is benchmarking. This is basically an attempt to become first DX12 game because the first DX12 game gets benchmarked everywhere. It's kind of backfired though because Gears of War has been such a train wreck, there is no way that any respectable publication is going to benchmark this game. And although Ashes of the Singularity has had a little bit of the thunder taking away from it, this is the game that you're going to see benchmarked as the true original DX12 game and it deserves it. I'm not a great fan of real time strategy games, but this one looks like a lot of fun and I strongly feel that the developers deserve support for it. So if you're tempted to buy Gears of War Ultimate Edition, frankly, I would hunt down Gears of War 2006 Edition, and I would spend the money on Ashes of the Singularity instead. You'll be doing everybody a favour. Right, that's it for another one. As usual, there will be a bunch of links in the description below, links to all the benchmarks, that sort of thing. I'm pretty sure there'll be a lively discussion below as well, so feel free to leave a comment, tell me what you think about all this, and I'll catch you later, guys. Thank <laughs> you.